Welcome. Uh, welcome. I'm Joni Mahoney, uh, the County Executive, and I have the honor of starting us off with some acknowledgments of some of our special guests that are here. I know we're joined by Onondaga County Legislature Minority Leader Linda Irvin. Linda, welcome. And we have the president of the Syracuse Common Council, Van Robinson. Welcome, Van. The, we have two mayors, the city of Oswego and the city of Cortland, William Barlow and Brian Tobin. Mayors, welcome. And we have many of our town supervisors and village mayors here with us. And um, I think our host, uh, the village of Salve Mayor, Ron Benedetti. Welcome, Ron. And we have the president of Upstate Medical University, Dr. Danielle Larocque Arena. The very popular Danielle Larocque Arena. <laughs> And we are joined by Beth Baldwin, uh, the Executive Director of the Carol Baldwin Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Beth, hello. And I want to welcome, from Central New York, I want to give a big warm welcome to Governor Cuomo and Sandra Lee. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We are very fortunate in Central New York to have Governor Cuomo. I say it all the time. I mean, he, we, we see Governor Cuomo all the time. And here we are at the fair where he and the state government are investing millions of dollars, recognizing that we're up here in Central New York and we're part of the state. And he's really been tremendous in his support for us. And today, uh, he is here to get the message out about the importance of breast cancer screening and that there is no excuse. After this legislative session um, and the governor being out on that uh, campaign trail in, um, in particular on this issue and drawing attention to the fact that there are 40,000 women in the United States who are uh, victims of breast cancer who lose their lives to breast cancer. It's the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women. And here in Central New York, we are not immune. I don't know if all of you know, I think many of you know, but Bill Magnarelli, our longtime assemblyman, we are in Bill's district right now, his wife Karen is fighting um, her own battle against breast cancer. And uh, they're not here with us today, but they're certainly in our thoughts and prayers. And the strength that the Magnarelli's have shown and the courage that they've shown really inspires us and I think it is something um, really that we can do is to make sure that we learn from this experience and I know they want nothing more than for us to get screened, catch it early, give the doctors, uh, Dr. Larocque Arena's staff, the uh, opportunity, St. Joe's is in the house too, um, to help us fight this terrible disease. And also here locally, we have one of our favorite daughters, um, Carol Baldwin, Beth's mom, who took her own battle against cancer and turned it into a life's mission in creating the Carol M. Baldwin Foundation that has raised over $9 million for SUNY Upstate and for SUNY Stony Brook. It's stories like Carol Baldwin's and Karen Magnarelli's that have inspired this campaign and provide hope for all women. And among all of this, there is a bright ray of hope. When doctors detect and treat breast cancer early, there is a lot they can do. And that's why it's vitally important that we get screened. And I know Governor Cuomo was, um, he has said many times in my presence that he's inspired by uh, Sandra Lee's story. And he took that inspiration and led the charge, championing women's health and making New York a role model in combating breast cancer. The legislation and funding from the state supports greater access to mammograms and care for women, and it reduces the financial strain of this screening. And I had the opportunity to talk to the governor about this, and just the 
uh, amount of money that people had to pay in copays was sometimes a barrier enough to getting screened. And, and recognizing that and doing something about it is something that we are all in uh, Governor Cuomo's debt for. And I want to thank Governor Cuomo for bringing attention, resources, and action to this important issue. And now I have the pleasure of introducing one of Syracuse's um, celebrities. And I think many people, um, I happen to love Coach Jim Beheim, and I know a lot of people love Coach Jim Beheim, but I think this community has grown even more fond of Coach Jim Beheim's wife, and I uh, have the pleasure of introducing Julie Beheim. Thank you so much. What an honor and joy to be a part of this exciting campaign today. Thank all of you for coming out to celebrate with us, to raise awareness, to spread the word, to add hope and life and longevity to, to all the women uh, in our community and in, in, our, in our state. Um, I am honored to be here with Governor Cuomo and Sandra Lee. Um, and I just commend this great campaign and initiative that is uh, taking place right now among us. It's so exciting. When I was asked to do this, um, I said, let me check my calendar, I'll get right back to you. Looked at my calendar for today, and literally the only other thing I had on today's calendar was my mammogram. So that's after this. So it just seemed so fitting and so right to be here. Um, to encourage and to celebrate. My husband, I know, would love to be here, and um, I have to say I was asked first, and they said, oh, by the way, if Jim can make it, and he couldn't, he's, he's recruiting, trying to get some more great players for us, but I know he realizes the importance of this as well and would love to be here, but uh, he's doing his thing, and, and, now, and I'm doing mine, so it kind of works out that way sometimes. Uh, but we're very blessed and uh, fortunate to be a part of this community. But I will say, um, cancer, breast cancer has touched me and my life. When I was in seventh grade, my mother was diagnosed. Um, she found a lump, had a mastectomy. Um, that was many years ago. Things have changed so much. She didn't have any treatment after that um, and survived and uh, never had a reoccurrence. It was a great story. Um, so as a result, I'm really aware of it. I'm paranoid. I am fearful sometimes. Um, getting a mammogram is nerve-wracking. Um, it's, it's a few minutes of uh, you're on edge, you're sitting behind that curtain waiting for them to come tell you, you know, you can leave now or, or not. And, um, you know, I, I find comfort in, though, knowing all the women that have been there before me and all the women that will come there after me. And I'm a huge advocate of screenings and regular uh, physicals and just staying on top of your health for many reasons. One is the history that I've had with my mom. Um, Jim is here because of early detection from prostate cancer. Um, and, you know, I have three kids and I want them to see me taking care of myself. I don't think that uh, it would be a very good thing if I neglected my own health and made them go to their yearly physical or whenever they weren't feeling, feeling well we went to the doctor. So I think that's really an important thing to pass on to our kids. Um, and you know, I, when, whenever someone's sick, and I just had a friend recently who is just a wonderful lady, um, very well educated, very just on top of everything. and. She, so I said, who's your, you do go to the doctor regularly, and I came to find out she did not, never got screens, never, none of that stuff. So when I find that out about someone, I go to town. I probably am, offen am offensive at some point because I'm just so passionate about that. And there are reasons in people's lives where they can't have medical care or get screenings, and I understand those and I am sensitive to, the, to those, but now I know that there is no excuse. And I can say, get screened, no excuses. And thank goodness for that, Governor Cuomo. Thank you so much for that. Awesome, so exciting. And the other thing I wanna add is, uh, you know, a few years ago, I knew no male, no men with breast cancer. And now I have a few in my life who have gone through it. So I think, 
you know, on the day that we're screened, we should at least tell a male or two in our lives, encourage them, self-exam, be aware of your breast health because it is happening. It does happen. We don't think about that. But I think it's really important to include that um, in conjunction with, with our breast health as well. So we're together in this, in all of this, really we are. We're all to get in this together. I think we support each other and encourage each other. Um, use whatever platform you've been given in your life and we all have one. We may not think that we do, but we do. Whether it's a coworker or a family member or whatever that is, we have a platform to share, encourage each other, to love each other, to smile and to stay on top of each other, you know, in, in a very encouraging way. So I really want us to take advantage of those platforms. Um, they're really here for a reason and they can add and bring some great things to our lives. So today's motorcycle ride is about getting this message out, this very exciting, important message, not just for women to get screened, but for men, uh, for all of us to uh, take care of each other, take care of ourselves, um, and just um, embrace that. And I, that's what I'm here today to encourage all of you to do. And one partner in this fight um, has served as an inspiration for so many, many women, countless women in our, in our world, really, and has been part of this campaign since it took off in New York City. It's my pleasure to introduce Sandra Lee, our inspiration. Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. We all have our mammograms. Yes. Boys, too. You can get breast cancer, too. Um, we're running a little late today on our ride, so I'm going to keep it very brief. But I want to thank you all for being here today, and I want to thank you for helping us spread the word and the message about taking care of your own health and being responsible for your own health. After this bill was signed into law, there is absolutely no reason why in this state every single woman shouldn't have the same diagnosis I did, which was early detection. That is the only way that you're going to live a nice, long, healthy life. And it's really important. You know, a lot of women say, I don't have time or I don't have the resources, I don't have money. Um, I remember one year I accidentally skipped a year of getting my mammograms and I'm pretty good at it because I just lost a year. We all get involved in our lives, we're all really busy, we're focused on what we need to do, our friends, our family, um, but we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves first because if we're not here to take care of our families, who's going to do it for us? So um, I want you to remember that first and foremost when you encourage your mother and your sister and your neighbor and your coworker to get her tushy in and get her mammogram. And I want to thank not only the senators and the legislators for passing this bill, but I want to thank our governor for creating it and introducing it and signing it into law. And with that, I will introduce Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back in Syracuse and a pleasure to be at the fairgrounds. And doesn't it look great? How about that new entranceway? Isn't that fantastic? First, it's a pleasure to be with your county executive, who's a, a real superstar uh, and does great work all across the state, great work for the state uh, with the Thruway Authority on top of everything else. Let's give a big round of applause, Joni Mahoney. To Julie Beheim, thank you so much for sharing your story and thank you for all the good work you do for the community. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Beth and Carol Baldwin and all the good work you've done over these years bringing this important issue to light, we thank you very much and we thank you for being here. <laughs> Before I make uh, the comments about uh, today and, and 
uh, the message that Sandra is bringing across the state. Uh, let's take a moment to just reflect on what has gone on in this country over the past few days. Uh, because we have seen some real ugliness uh, and some frightening images uh, that really should shake us to the core and make us think. There's no doubt that you feel an anger and a frustration among the people of this country. You see it playing out in politics. You see it all different ways. Um, but what we've seen over the past few days is really disturbing. What happened in Louisiana, uh, what happened in Minnesota, and then yesterday in Dallas, Texas, 12 police officers uh, purposely shot is really, really shocking. And, uh, you know, I said earlier that in some ways it seems like America's demons are challenging America's better angels. For a person, they say your greatest weakness can be your greatest strength. It just depends on what side of the line you're on. The greatest strength that this country has is its diversity. That's what makes us who we are. That was the founding premise. This country, unlike any other country on the globe, we're not one religion, one nationality. We did it the exact opposite way. We said we can invite people from everywhere and then make one community from that diversity. And that made us strong. Because when you have people from all different countries, they all brought their individual talents. And when you brought those individual talents together, the collective was very strong. And that is our strength. And what the demons are trying to do, and the hate mongers are trying to do, is they're trying to make that diversity a weakness. And rather than finding similarities and commonalities and celebrating the, the commonality, they want to point to the differences and create fear and anger about the differences. Different color skin, different race, different sexual orientation, and make that the enemy. Only America can defeat America. This is the strongest country on the planet. No one can come close. The only enemy that we could have that's formidable is if we have division within and among ourselves. That's the great fear for this country. And that's why I would ask you, in honor of the past few days, let's have a moment of silence for those who have lost their lives. Thank you. The, this past legislative session in Albany, the legislative session goes from January to June. So it uh, ended recently. Six months, sometimes it feels like six years, but it's really only six months. And when the dust settles and they look at what we did this year, you're going to see that it was an extraordinarily productive year. We did a lot of good things on a lot of levels. Uh, we cut taxes for the middle class to the lowest level in 70 years, believe it or not. Uh, we, we funded more for public education than ever before in the history of the state of New York. We, are investing in economic development, especially in upstate New York, bringing back jobs, which is so important. <laughs> but for me, in some ways, the three most important issues are all people-focused, the three most important accomplishments. We passed the best heroin program in the United States, and we're going to make those insurance companies 
We're going to make those insurance companies actually provide treatment to people who need it rather than playing this game that they play where you need approval from the insurance company before you can get the treatment and by the way they never give you the approval. Um, so we did that. We passed the best paid family leave program in the United States. And we, and we passed this breast cancer legislation that we're going to talk about today, which is unique in the nation. No state has done what New York has done in combating breast cancer. And as you heard from Sandy, the uh, past year has been uh, extraordinarily difficult for her uh, and for our family, uh, because breast cancer as soon as you hear that word, as soon as you get that diagnosis, as soon as you hear the C word, you know, your, your heart stops. Uh, and then breast cancer, I thought, was going to be relatively short period of time. You'd have an operation, it's over. Uh, but it's not that at all. It is long term, it has many phases, it's physical, it's emotional. Um, and I've had quite an education over the past year uh, trying to help Sandy deal with it. And what stuck in my mind was the first thing the doctor said when he was talking to us about the diagnosis, he said, well, Sandy's lucky because we caught it early. And I thought about that ever since. She's lucky because we caught it early. Well, why should anyone ever be unlucky? Why shouldn't you catch it early? If you can catch it early, catch it early. When you look at the numbers and the probability on the success rate, it is dramatically different depending on when you catch it. So why should you be lucky to catch it early? Why isn't everyone getting screened? And over the past year, doctors, nurses, women, waiting rooms, we've been talking to women saying, why haven't you gotten screened? About 40% of women, 30 to 40%, don't go for the screenings when they should. And we were inquiring why. There were two basic reasons, time and money, which are normally the obstacles. Women said, you know, I have family, I work, etc. And the time the hospitals and the clinics are open to actually do the mammogram and go for the screening, that's when I'm working and that's when I have the kids, I can't get there. So the first thing this bill does is it mandates that hospitals and clinics stay open four more hours per week after five o'clock and on weekends so the hospital and the clinic is open when a woman can actually go get the test. That takes care of the first obstacle. The second obstacle was the money. And women said, you know, I don't want to make my family pay the copay or the deductible to the insurance company. Just because you have insurance, which Americans have now, doesn't mean it doesn't cost you. There's a copay or there's a deductible. And it can be significant. And the economy is very, very tough, and families are struggling. And I've talked to many women who said, you know, I feel guilty making the family pay the bill when I'm not really sure that I need it in the first place. What we did there is we went to the insurance companies, and for the first time ever, mandate that the insurance companies waive any co-pay or deductible when it comes to screening or follow-up testing from the screening so it is entirely free for women. There is no cost whatsoever to the test. So the two main obstacles, time and money, are eliminated. Evening hours, weekend hours, the clinic, the hospital be, will be ready when you're ready. 
and it costs you absolutely nothing to get the screening done. And it can be all the difference in the world. It's not overly dramatic to say it's the difference between life and death when you get that screening done. Now, the past year has been difficult for me. It's been hellacious for Sandy. But I just want to say, I believe you can really tell about a person when times are tough. You know, when, when things are going well, it's easy to be upbeat and be happy. But when things are tough, that's when you see what a person is really made of. And all through this, Sandra has gotten smarter and more resilient and tougher and more giving. She documented everything that she went through. So if another woman is in this situation, God forbid, she has the benefit of all the doctors and all the homework that Sandy did to take her to the point that she did. And one year later, she is cancer free. And She is smarter, tougher, and more beautiful than she's ever been. So, and the point of today is, you know, government has its limits. We've done everything that we can do. We have the best law in the United States of America. I believe other states will now copy the New York law. I hope other states copy the New York law. But, but, women still have to take the first step. Women still have to take the first step. And that's the point of this motorcycle ride. We wanted a dramatic fashion to get the word out. We wanted to get people's attention. We wanted to uh, find a way to connect with people and get them to actually focus with all that's going on. And that's what this motorcycle ride is all about. A woman said to me, the uh, day before yesterday, she said, you know, I saw you on TV riding the motorcycle. I said, yes. She said, you know, governors don't ride motorcycles. I said, what does it say that? In the Bible, does it say governors shall not? She said, I've never seen governor ride a motorcycle. I said, well, now you have. I said, did you know what I was talking about? She said, no, I just knew you were riding a motorcycle. <laughs> so we have a little more work to do. But it is about saying to women, saying to families, please get tested, get screened. There's no reason not to. Women have to take the first step. Husbands should ask their wives. Sons should ask their wives. Sisters should ask their sister. Have you gone for the screening? Why not? And if you are of the range, for uh, where your doctor says you should get the screening, please, please, please get it screened. In New York, there is no reason why every woman who is of the right age should not have, not have gotten that screening done. And we will save lives with this law. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you again, um, Governor Cuomo. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Sandra Lee. And I mentioned that Upstate was here in St. Joe's, but I see Krauss Hospital is in the house too. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we are headed out. Um, governors aren't supposed to ride motorcycles, neither are county executives, and I will be riding with the governor to our next stop 70 miles west of here. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>